The NASCAR Xfinity Series race has officially included from Richmond Raceway, and Joe Gibbs Racing picks up a dominating clinic, and Chandler Smith picks up another victory. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to the video. I just got done watching NASCAR Xfinity Series race from Richmond International Race. We have quite a bit to talk about from this race. Let's go and talk about it. So at the start of the race, you have Parker Restlap lead the field from the inside, and Brandon Jones on the outside. And we saw some really good racing early between Parker Restlap and Cole Custer, but Parker Restlap held off a hard charging Cole Custer and would dominate the early portion of this race. Meanwhile, lap 15, Parker Restlap had about a two or three tenths of second lead. He would pick up a paper blank on the front of his grill, who was able to continue going. The first cost race to come out lap number 20 for Ryan Vargas, who basically blew up coming down the front straightaway just a car caught on fire, and unfortunately his day would come to an end because of the cars catching fire. So then all leaders would stay out off of pit road except a couple of drivers in the back like Garrett Smithley, Patch Emerald, and Blake Perkins. And then on the race start, you have Parker Rest left lead the field from the inside with Justin Allgaier on the outside. And Justin Allgaier got a fantastic restart on the outside lane going to turn number two and was able to pass Parker Rest left for the race lead. The racers string out a little bit and get a little bit long. We see some really good racing up front between Corey Heim was in the 26 for Sam on racing and Justin Allgaier. And Corey Heim was eventually able to pass Justin Allgaier for the race lead. Then we have the caution would come out of lap 43 when Brandon Jones started dropping flu going into turn number one and hit the outside wall really hard and Ryan Seek had nowhere to go, bringing the caution out. Unfortunately, Brandon Jones had either a brake failure or an engine failure, bringing the caution out. During the caution, Blaine Perkins would have to stop on the track because he basically lost power inside the car and would go many laps down and pretty much fall out of contention in this race. Not like he was in contention in the first place. During the caution, A.J. Allmendinger, Jeremy Clemens, Shane Van Gisberg, and Brennan Poole, Kyle Segan, Dawson Cram would be among the many drivers that would come down pit road. Brennan Poole was the only driver who came down pit road that decided to take tires. So then on the restart, Corey Heim lead the field from the inside, and Justin Allgaier on the outside, and Corey Heim put a big block on Cole Custer, and Justin Allgaier got a great run and was able to take the race lead. But as the run continued on, Eric Amrol's car really started coming in, especially in the long run. And a lap 65 was able to get around Justin Allgaier for the race lead. Yet Brennan Poole was actually making his way up to the front as well with some really good racing up front because he had fresh tires, but would not get up there to pass Eric Amrol. And coming out the final corner, Eric Amrol would win stage number one at Richmond International Raceway. All leaders would then come down pit road with Eric Amrol winning the race off pit road. Corey Heim would have a horrendous pit stop after a jack malfunction on pit road and would drop a ton of positions back. So then on the race start, you had Eric Amrol lead the field from the inside and Justin Allgaier on the outside. And Justin Allgaier tried to get by Eric Amrol on the race start, but had a bad jump after all Amarola all waited a little bit longer and Eric Amrol was able to clear and get the lead. 10 laps later, lap number 96, the caution would come out once again with Logan Beard spinning in turn number 3 from 32nd position. Just got loose trying to get under. I can't remember who it was. Maybe Dawson Cram. I'm not entirely sure. Got below him and lost it, but he was able to save it and continue going. So then, under the caution, Haley Deegan, Dawson Cram, Ryan Seek, and Logan Bearden all came down pit road for feel and adjustments, and Ryan Seek got a speeding penalty. So then on the next three, sorry, Eric Amrol lead the field from the inside with Riley Hurts on the outside. And Riley Hurts spun the tires and lost a ton of ground while Eric Amrol, he got a fantastic restart and was able to clear for the lead. Sheldon Cree, he was starting to make his way up to the front, but unfortunately he got black flagged because he had issues on the front brake and his day would come to an end because he would go to the garage and fall out of this race. After a terrible performance today, he basically has continued to fall back after a great start to the year. Unfortunately, once again, falls out of the race because of that. It wouldn't matter, though, at the end as Eric Amrol continued to put up a dominating clinic and he would come out the final corner on the long run and win stage number two with Chandler Smith starting to close in. So then all leaders would come down pit row with Taylor Gray and Sam Mayer coming off of pit row making contact. There's a little contact there coming off of pit row. Sam Mayer made a little bit of a mistake. And unfortunately, there was a little contact. And Eric Amrol also won the race off pit row. So then on the race start, Eric Amrol lead the field from the inside with Sam Mayer on the outside. And Eric Amrol got a great restart. But at this point, Sam Mayer, he had a lot of damage and a tire rub coming inside the car. And he was staying in second position. But then a few laps later, he unfortunately would have a flat left front tire and would have to come down pit road going multiple laps down. During this time, though, Chandler Smith was starting to emerge and he get a great run at Eric Amrola and was able to pass Eric Amrola for the race lead with 88 laps to go. 
And then the final caution in the race to come out of lap 173 when Joey Gay spun and backed it hard into the outside wall after contact from Dawson Cram. Dawson Cram pushed him multiple seconds down the front straightaway and he backed into the outside wall really hard. And would take the rear back bumper off the car and would throw it at Dawson Cram's car. That's probably going to be a suspension from Joey Gase, unfortunately, because NASCAR absolutely frowns upon walking across the track. But I completely understand Joey Gase's frustration. His interview after the, the basically getting let out of the infield care center, which they really haven't done much this year, I thought was really, really funny. But it was understandable, the frustration, because like I said, he just completely dumped him in the corner. I know Dawes Graham's got talent, but that was a bonehead move on Cram's part. And I get Joey Gase's frustration 100%, but that was the biggest moment of the race for sure. During this caution, there would be a little strategy. Justin Allgaier, Cole Custer, Riley Hurts, Parker Ressoff, Kyle Weatherman, Shane Van Gisberg, and A.J. Allmendinger, Josh Williams, and Haley Deegan all stayed out, while the rest leaders, they would come down pit road, meaning that Chandler Smith would restart 15th. So then on the race start, Justin Allgaier lead the field from the inside with Cole Custer on the outside, and Justin Allgaier would get a great race start. But five or six laps later, lap 191, Chandler Smith would make the winning pass on the inside of Justin Allgaier and take the race lead from Justin Allgaier while Eric Armroll trying to chase him down as well. And as the run progressed and came up, we saw at times Eric Armroll being a little bit quicker, but Chandler Smith was starting to pull away. And then with 27 laps to go, Cole Custer came down pit road because it would take four tires after feeling like he had a tire going down and would drop the 29th position, but started making his way back up to the front and was passing a lot of cars during the long run because he was two to three seconds, eight lap fast faster than the rest of the field. It looked like Chandler Smith was going to run away with this thing. And then Haley Deegan, she started having power issues and started dropping after running pretty solid today around 20th position. She unfortunately lost power and would drop off to the racetrack and go to the garage with her day being over. We thought a caution was coming out, but it would not matter in the end as coming out the final corner, Chandler Smith pulls out a pretty big lead by nearly four and a half seconds and picks up win number two of 2024. Chandler Smith, we all knew, was going to be really strong and rich, and we know how strong the Joe Gibbs racing cars have been, and Chandler Smith's been off to such an amazing start in 2024. He's been extremely impressive so far this year. He's been the guy to beat, in my opinion, and you're going to have to go through Chandler Smith if you want to win this championship. Look at the similarities, too. Richmond and Phoenix, very similar racetracks in a sense. I think Chandler Smith might have just become the championship favorite early. I expect him to be the guy to beat this year. Congratulations to him on win number two of the season. I think he is going to be the guy to beat to win the championship this year in 2024. So now we're going to take a look at the race results. I'll give my score and thoughts on today's race. So Chandler Smith picks up the victory. Eric Armroll finished the second. I think Eric Armroll, for majority race, he had the fastest car. He was really good on the long run and really good on the short run. But at the end of the day, he didn't have the car to beat at the end because Chandler Smith's car got better. But still, his best performance since in his, the Xfinity Series so far this year. Second place, a really great day for Eric Armroll. I'm telling you, he was my pick coming into the weekend. I think he's going to win a race here sooner rather than later. He's going to run a Marzo next week, and we know how strong he was last year there. So I think Eric Armroll is going to be a threat this year. Taylor Gray finishes third. Very impressive debut. Struggled in the beginning, but they made that car better. Play some pitch strategy, and that car got progressively better and finishes in third place. Ran top five and top ten a majority of the day and gets a very solid debut in third place. Fantastic run for Taylor Gray in third. Corey Heim finished fourth. He looked at the car to be early in the race, which is really impressive. We know how Sam Hunt Racing has been. Just a dominant day for the, the Toyotas in general. A really impressive run for Corey Heim in fourth. He's a guy that probably can win the truck championship this year. Fourth place, really great run for him. Jesse Love finishes fifth. Struggled a little early, but they made that car progressively better. Played the strategy near the end and gets a very respective fourth, fifth place finish. Great run for Jesse Love in fifth. Bubba Pollard finished the sixth. A very impressive day for Bubba Pollard. Had to start in the blast because he qualified horrendously because he had missed a corner in turn number one, but was progressively getting better as the day went on. Pitted at the end and gets a very respectful top 10 finish in his debut. I hope Bubba Pollard gets another chance and an opportunity to race with Junior Motorsports because he deserves another opportunity. To finish in the top 10 in your debut is very impressive. Great day for Bubba Pollard in sixth place. Parker Clearman finished a seventh solid day for him, getting a top 10. Great run for him. Austin Hill finishes eighth. I wasn't sure how he was going to do in this race, but a solid performance for Austin Hill. Again, he's had basically only one finish now outside of the top five this year. His average finish is still like a three at this point. So fantastic day for Austin Hill in eighth place. Sammy Smith finished ninth. 
was about a 10 to 15 place car most of the day. Played the strategy at the endo and gets a respectful ninth place finish. Good run for him. And Cole Custer comes back after those tire issues and rebounds to finish in the top 10. A disappointing day for his standards, but still coming back from a top 10. Solid performance all days, all things considered. Justin Allgaard finished 11th. He had a top 5 car. Lost a lot of ground because of the tire strategy. Still gets 11th place finish. Not a bad day, but not a great day. All things considered, he still finishes 11th. Josh Williams finished 12th. He pissed definitely by far his best performance in 2024. Ran top 10 at points, struggled in qualifying, but that car was really good. We know he's a good short track racer. He needed a run like this today because he's been struggling in the owner's points this year. A 12th place run will definitely help that for sure. Good run for Josh Williams. Riley Hurts finishes 13th, was good in the beginning, but the car was terrible on the long run. Thus finishing the top 15, though, not a bad day, all things considered. AJ Allmendinger finishes in 14th. Allmendinger's car seemed to be a little bit struggling on the long, was holding up SVG quite a bit in this race, but he does finish 14th. Not a bad day, but not a great day, all things considered. Shane Van Gisbergen finishes 15th, another top 15 performance. Decent run for him. Didn't have a car that was going to win by any stretch of imagination, but a top 15 is not that bad. Colleg's has been a little hit or miss this year so far in 24. Still to finish top 15, not a bad day, all things considered. I know he did finish a lap down, but hey, complete as many laps as possible and does get a very respectful top 15 finish. Good run for him. Parker Reslap finishes 16th. Decent performance of Parker Reslap, who was really good in the beginning. Led laps early, but the car faded, but still gets a respectful top 20 finish. Kyle Weatherman finishes 17th. Good day for him. Ran top 15 a lot of the day. Gets a very respectful top 20. Matt DiMenendetto finishes 18th. Want to give him a shout out because he had a really good car, in my opinion, for the car he was in. That 38 car before he'd been in it was struggling. See him finish top 20 in his first star in Xfinity this year. Very, very impressive. He just needs to keep his mouth shut and not make mistakes and do bad things with sponsors, and he's going to be going far this year. 18th, really great day for Matt to Benedetto. Josh Bleakin finishes 19th. Not a bad performance for him. Leland Honeyman finishes in 20th. Garrett Smithley finished 21st. Logan Bearden, who had a pretty solid performance today, did take tires, but still gets rifle top 25 finish in his debut. Solid performance for him. Kyle Seek finished 23rd. Jeremy Clemens finishes 24th. Dawson Cram, after his issues today, he finished 25th. Jeb Burned, a disappointing performance today, finished 26th. Ryan Ellis finishes 27th. Brian Poole, disappointing performance for him today, he finished 28th. Anthony Alfredo finishes 29th. And Sam Mayer, again, just a not a great performance because of the tire issues. He finishes 30 of four laps down. He just needs some good luck to go his way, man. He's had a lot of bad luck so far this year. He finishes 30th. Haley Deegan finished 31st. She was going to finish in the top 20 before those issues came into play. She finished 31st after running out of power. Just another not great day for her. She needs to turn the corner quickly. Not a great performance for in 31st. Ryan Seek finished 32nd after his issues. Brian Perkins finished 33rd. Joey Gase finished 34th. Sheldon Creed, after falling out of the race, finishes 35th. Patrick Emerling finishes 36th. Brandon Jones finishes 37th. And Ryan Vargas has finished last in 38th. So now let's talk about the overall race as a whole and give my score and thoughts on today's race. I thought the racing for the most part today was really entertaining and really solid. Sure, at the end, it got strung out a little bit, but I thought the racing behind the leader was really entertaining and really fun to watch. And I love the comers and goers aspect. Plus, I thought Stage 1 and Stage 2 were absolutely energetic and really, really exciting to watch. You had a lot of side-by-side -side racing for the lead. You had a lot of great battles. I think the racing today was absolutely phenomenal for the standards of Xfinity so far this year. I'm going to give today's NASCAR Xfinity Series race overall. I'm going to give this race an 8 and a half out of 10. I thought the racing for the first two stages was great. It got strung out, like I said, at the end, but an 8.5 out of 10 is my score for the NASCAR Xfinity Series race in Richmond. I thought the racing was pretty solid, all things considered. So, that is going to be today's NASCAR Xfinity Series race review from Richmond International Raceway. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please ask to subscribe to the channel, the notifications on, so if I win a video, it does go live on my channel. Follow me through Facebook and Instagram and support my Patreon as well. Let's go to more with any comment your thoughts below on today's race. What are thoughts on today's race? Let me know below. Let me know your score in the comments below. And congratulate Chandler Smith on picking up the victory. Let me your thoughts in the comments below. There might be a couple more videos dropping today. Maybe on Matt Benedetto's performance and Shane Van Gisberg's performance this today. You might hear that. Maybe also on Bella Pollard as well. Tomorrow you're going to have the starting lineup video for the NASCAR Cup Series race at Richmond. And you also see the Cup Series race depending on the weather because the weather might be issue tomorrow evening and then Monday and Tuesday will be videos dropping that you might have to wait to see. 
So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode, and I'll see you guys next time for more great awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.